us about the freedom that having a celebrant gives you um, for any ceremony. So if you're talking funerals, I've got a funeral. So for funerals, both actually town and country, Adrian Pink and myself, um, do a lot of natural burials and I particularly specialise in it. I love it. I think one of the things you one of the most precious things you can give somebody is time. And when I do set probably should put some mascara on, just see my face. Um when I redo burials or Ashton's Herman or just a ceremony at Plans and Woods, which is just outside Guildford on the Leatherhead side, um, you have time. You have time. It's not a twenty minute in out. There isn't the next family waiting to come in as you're going out and you haven't been waiting to see the other family off as you go in. You don't have that. You have a really good solid block of time that is yours to do what you feel is right, what is the good sender for your friend, what it is that you need as a family to start that grieving process. I've even done weddings there. If you're a venue, for example, and you're thinking, oh well wedding season's only a few bits in the year and we need some stuff in the in the week. If you're open to um, ceremonies of any ilk, um, then get in contact because I'm always looking for venues. Um, those of you that are new to following me, thank you, welcome, welcome. I'm Helen Noble. Um, I used to manage theatres in London for a good 20 years. I stayed at one venue for 10 years. Um, before I'd been there, I'd sort of dusted around um, art centres, comedy studios, all that sort of stuff. Um, so I love and appreciate a well-run venue. <laughs> um, but making sure that clients can think outside the box because they, A, feel confident enough to ask questions, B, they feel calm enough to think straight because either you're super excited because you got engaged and you're like, yes, 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 yes. Um, and you just want to get planning and everyone's put the fear of God into you because you haven't put the registrar. Don't worry about that. Or because somebody's just died and even if it isn't sudden even if you know it's been coming it's still horrific it's still a shock and the last thing you want to do is sit in an undertaker's office with bag ashley on her red lipstick and her slippers under the desk i'm not exaggerating i have seen it and then give you a shiny brochure and lead you down this path of convenience celebrants won't do that what have we got here Celebrations and ceremonies can often be can often feel restricted by time constraints. So knowing that time is something that can be given is such a welcome and big thing to hear. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, the time restriction is a massive bugbear of mine. And one of my values is giving people time. It's time. It's time. It's the most precious thing you can give because you can never get it back. And it's absolutely your only thing that you can't control you know time will pass the clock carries on ticking and if people are clock watching whilst you're trying to make decisions that aren't necessarily life-changing for your loved one but they will stick with you forever and it might be the wrong decision or it might be the right decision and so you either have just walked into trauma or you've walked into hope and gratitude and relief to go do you know what i really took time to think about that and i know it's right so time is a massive massive value of mine and it is absolutely the thing as a celebrant that is my my go-to reason for that hopefully <laughs> is if you have a vicar or a priest or someone of faith lead the ceremony the ceremony will ultimately become about god or whoever is their prophet whoever it is they're talking about if it's a council registrar funeral uh, wedding it will be about the law and next time you go to a registrar led wedding count how many times they say the word law and legal it's ridiculous <laughs> It's like threaded in every single sentence 
So it doesn't become about the couple or about the deceased or about the baby if it's a naming or about the couple if it's renewal of vows and you've been married for 20 years and got three kids and three gang grandkids but you've actually finally made time to have a wedding. A celebrant makes it about the client, whoever the client may be. Very true, yes, exactly. So the things when you're trying to take a moment to process where you're at, whether it be planning a funeral, planning a wedding, planning an evening, take a moment to think, hang on, what, rather than, loads of people are always saying to you, what do you want, what do you want, what do you want? It doesn't get any easier, and the way they ask you, the tone might change, but you don't know what you want, you might know what you don't want. If what you don't want is easier to work out, start with that. You don't want to feel rushed. You don't want it not to be about you. You don't want a stranger in the room sharing your most intimate stories of love, whether it's between you and your mother, like yours was, or whether it was it's between you and your partner. Public displays of affection is not a very British thing. So standing at a coffin, feeling you can't cry because you better not, or standing in front of your loved one, declaring your love, thinking, oh my God, I hope I don't fall to bits. Why would you want a stranger in the room for that? Ah, don't do it to yourself. Be kind to yourself. Give yourself time. Hire someone that's a celebrant that will give you time. Go to a venue that doesn't have the time constraint so that you have time. And I've lost my track. <laughs> and... I mean, I'll take notes, I don't forget what I'm saying halfway through. <laughs> um, but actually, that said, I do take notes, I do write a script. I also give you time to digest it. Because whether it's a wedding or a funeral or a naming or a renewal of vows, whatever it is your thing, if it's a naming ceremony for an adult, I've done a couple of them, they're brilliant, they're amazing, they're very emotional and I always cry. Um, but it is, you, you are having a celebrant-led ceremony because there is a rite of passage that you want to mark, that rite of passage is big. It's big enough that you've called in your friends and family, you've hired your celebrant, you've got in your events team, it's a thing. So to not have time to take it all in is a, is a real shame. So I do send my script always, and I send the whole script. There are celebrants out there who don't send the script at all. There are celebrants out there who cherry pick the bits they want to send you. Um, it might be they don't send you the eulogy, but they send you the whole service, or it might be they send you the service, but not the eulogy. And that's how they work, and they found their formula, and it all works, and they're happy days, so that's fine. That works for them. For me, yes, I'm precious about my work in that I'm proud of it. Um, I. I give my heart and soul to it, but it's not my story. So I give it to the client and say, here is my script. It's not in a PDF. It's in Word. Do what you like to it. Track changes, cut paste, rewrite, throw some edits, give me a phone call. Spend some time with the script ahead of the ceremony because it gets your head around it. That in itself can be really reassuring to um, couples. Um, I also, I've just seen the photographer come on here, thanks Tom. Um, I tend to send the order of service to the team, um, whether it's a wedding or a funeral, you know, whatever. If I've got photography or a live stream um, or a videographer, I would say to the couple, are you happy to send, you know, by all means send the order of service to the suppliers, because if you don't, I will, unless you say otherwise. Because it is, m most of the time, and correct me if I'm wrong, there's a few photographers on here, um, Don Wales Photography, hi, 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 um, and Andy, new bill photo, hi, thanks guys for joining. Um, hopefully, the photographers appreciate having a celebrant, because we... We just sort of let, we're like, we will give you access to the best shots, you know, I'll move out the way so you can get that shot. Or I'm like, I'm not precious, move where you want to be. 
Um, and, you know, and the hope is the exchanges, I'll get out of the way so you can get the good shots, then please send me the shots so that I can use them and, and you know, share the messaging that both of us will be giving, that, you know, we're good at our profession, it's really important to us, we want to serve, we want to get the message out there. Um, some photographers don't want the script, which is fine. They're like, no, no, it's fine, I guess it's same old, same old. And you're like, well, yeah, but no, because actually we're going to do a candle ceremony for so-and-so, we're going to have a mother's first kiss, not the so-and-so first kiss. It's actually a renewal of vows, so they're not going to say their vows as such. They're going to do a little twist. So the energy that you're going to experience isn't necessarily the energy that you'd expect. It's going to have a bit more joy. It's going to be a bit more fun. Um, the guest energy to the couple at the front will be more interactive. It's just... It's just so much better having a celebrant led wedding. Um, hopefully, photographers, you enjoy. Oh, hi, Tasha, as well. Um, have photographers and other suppliers when you're working with celebrants, hopefully, it's always good news that you see it's a celebrant led ceremony that you think, oh, great, good, fab. Um, and as couples or as clients, when you're thinking of pulling together some kind of ceremony that is a rite of passage to wedding and marriage, to um, passing on, dying, saying goodbye, farewell, funerals, or namings, or whatever. Whatever it is that is that rite of passage, it's big enough that you're making an event of it. So, take a moment, pause, go for the celebrant option, rather than a registrar or just in a church because you will be able to do all of what you want together so if it's a funeral people think they have to um, do everything at once and you don't you can do a big ceremony with them there and then have them leave and go to come with just the immediate family or privately you could um, have them go to the crem first, pick up the ashes, and then we have them there for the ceremony then. There is so... The, the, find out what you don't want, and then we'll be able to make what you do want happen. I genuinely think that's the joy, the ease, the beauty, the magic of having a celebrant at a ceremony, whatever chapter of that journey of life that you're on. We will always find a way. If you find working out what you want too much, work out what you don't want, and then we'll help you do the rest. So use us, love us, we'll make it happen. And it and we yeah, we will always find a way. So I'm just getting that message out again, because I've had lots of inquiries that are like, can you, can you? And you're like, yes, 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 yes. Anyway. Lots of love. Take care. Bye.